Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today I want to talk about something a little bit different, especially for this channel. I want to talk about gas masks. Now, the original reason I wanted to make this video was because of the recent rally that took place in Virginia. Before that rally, there was a lot of people that were taking to social media and posting links telling others that if you are going to be attending the rally, you should have a gas mask in case pepper spray is used or some other type of irritant. So these people were posting links. I decided to click on those links to see where they would take you, and most of the time they would take you to Amazon and the product that they were suggesting these people take to a rally were really nothing more than just common use around the house stuff. They wouldn't stop more than let's say just dust. That was pretty much it. They looked fancy, they have cartridges, but really they're just cartridges that are designed to stop dust and other, you know, small particles. That's pretty much it. They wouldn't do anything against pepper spray. Now, since that time, the coronavirus has come around and that's added a whole new list of things for people, especially for those people who like to be prepared. So since there are people out there that think just a standard dust mask is going to be good for pepper spray, I kind of wanted to clear it up a little bit. And I also talked to a company at SHOT Show that makes products that you would actually want. Now, I do know a little bit of something about this because prior to doing YouTube full time, that was my job. I was a, a hazmat specialist. I drove a pressurized tanker truck. I would go around to different businesses and companies and we would pick up whatever hazardous waste they have. You know, everything from your standard like ammonia. A lot of companies will use ammonia to clean their machines. So food companies and stuff like that, uh, they would use ammonia or I'd pick up jet a uh, jet fuel, uh, go to the military bases. And if jet fuel has been sitting there a long time and it's no longer viable to them, then we would go ahead and we would pick up their jet fuel. So, uh, the list of chemicals that I would go and I would interact with on a daily basis was pretty wide and we would also do chemical cleanup as well. So if there was a hazmat spill, we would respond and we would take care of it. So I was always in a gas mask or I was in what we call a Gumby suit, which is basically a full suit, you know, front mask. It's a SCBA, which is a self-contained breathing apparatus. And it's basically where it supplies your own oxygen. It doesn't actually filter it out. It just gives you uh, oxygen through a, a tank or some other device. So uh, this is something I'm definitely for familiar with. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about it. Now, before we talk to this company and they go over their different canisters, what their canisters are good for, what the shelf lives are, what exactly they'll filter out and how to read the different color systems and so forth, I wanna give you guys some quick tips. If you are looking at a gas mask, there's a couple things that you wanna consider. One, if you're thinking about you know rallies, if you're thinking about pepper spray and stuff like that, uh, I saw a lot of people just recommending just a lower face mask without any type of eye shield. You have to remember, these are eyes, eye, nose, and throat irritants, right? So they go after your eyes, they go after your nose, they go after your throat, they make it hard for you to see, they make it hard for you to breathe. So getting something that's just for your lower face isn't going to do anything because the second you get an eye irritant, you're going to be out of the game altogether and it doesn't matter if you can breathe because you can't see, right? So you want to look for a full face mask if that's the case. Now when it comes to the coronavirus or something like that, I don't know if it's transmittable through the ducts in your eyes, uh, but still you want to be able to cover your face. So a lower face mask with uh, canisters that will handle biological uh, is probably going to be a good deal. But remember, if you're going to be dealing with the irritants you want to cover the whole face if you're dealing with the virus you might just only need to cover uh, your mouth right so keep that in mind another thing is is finding something that will accept the proper cartridges some of these face masks out there will accept cartridges and they'll accept different cartridges but they will only accept cartridges that maybe can handle up to like paint fumes or something like that you want to make sure that you read down in the description of whatever product you're looking at that it will take different canisters that will be able to handle whatever agent that you're uh, looking at as a threat so if it's chemical, if it's biological, if it's nuclear, uh, whatever it is, even if it's just down to paint or dust, you want to make sure that it covers those specific things before you buy it. Because I, I've actually run into this problem before where I had the wrong canisters on. I ran into a chemical that went right through that canister and it just basically condenses in your mask and it knocked me flat on my ass. I woke up about five minutes later when somebody had dragged me out to clean air. So getting the proper canister is always a good deal. Then once you actually get your face mask, you want to make sure that this thing works. So the way that you want to do it is you want to, here's the first thing first, okay? If you're a guy with a beard, forget about it. No face mask is going to work for you. That's, that's number one. If you have any beard, if you have any stubble, if you have anything like that, a face mask doesn't work. If you do not have a proper seal, 
then something's gonna get inside. If I was to try and put a face mask on with my beard right now, it's just gonna basically come right through my hair. If I have stubble, it's just gonna hold it out far enough where that stuff is gonna get through. So you wanna make sure that you're clean shaven before you use that. You put it on, you get it on, you get it cinched nice and tight, and you don't put the canisters on yet. First of what you wanna do is you wanna do a fitment seal. So you wanna cover up any spots where air is going to leave the mask, so two canisters, single canister, anything like that. And then you wanna do exhale, and you wanna feel that it's basically expanding on your face and nothing is coming out of the sides, right? That makes sure that you know your seal is actually proper. Then what you wanna do is you wanna do the reverse. You wanna cover any uh, in, imports, and then you wanna inhale. And then if you inhale, you wanna also make sure that the gas mask is being sucked to your face to make sure that, that seal is proper as well. So you wanna make sure that you do those things. Another thing that's really good that you can do is uh, find a way to create or buy a sulfur stick or something like that, because sulfur is a, a very fine and very uh, uh, potent smelling uh, gas. So if you get something that's sulfur and you put on your canisters, you want to take that sulfur and you want to get it all around your mask and everything else. If you can smell that sulfur, if you can smell that really stinky smell, remember particles are what makes that smell, right? So those particles are making it through the mask and you can actually smell anything. If you can smell anything, the gas mask isn't working or at least it's not working for that particular thing. So again, you want to get something that's really stinky, a very lightweight, and you want to be able to make sure that you can't smell it. Uh, if you can smell it again, you're done. So with those basic tips, fitment, tight, shave face, check your inhale, exhale, and make sure that everything's good on the mask and you have the proper cartridges, you should be good to go. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and talk to the guys who actually make real good mask cartridges, filters, and even suits for kids. Roman Zerzhevsky, Mira Safety. Website is www.mirasafety.com. So we have a range of products here. Everything from gas mask filters to Geiger counters to uh, gas masks and even children's protective products. So let's just start off with the filters over here. Uh, so we have six different filters to choose from. Each one is for a different set of threats. This right here is our most popular filter. It is a CBRN filter, standing for chemical, radiological, biological, and nuclear protection. And uh, the big value here is it does have a 20-year shelf life. Most of our competitors have a five to seven year shelf life on the market. This is a 20 year shelf life, so you can stock up on these, have them in for an extended period of time, and not have to you know, swap out and throw them away every couple of years. Uh, this product right here is very unique because it is a CBRN filter, uh, once again, uh, but it also has an oxidizing agent uh, which converts carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, allowing you to breathe it out. Um, and you'll be able to tell a filter rating based on the code over here that you'll see. So this one you'll see A1, B2, E2, K2, HG, NO, etc. So each one of those letter number combos stands for a different class of agents and then the class of filtration. So I can show you over here, A stands for organic gases and vapors, B is inorganic gases and vapors, E is acid gases, etc. So for CBRN protection, what you're going to want to look for is ABEK, so A-B-E-K. Um, you're going to want to look for class two filters with a two on the side of it, because class two filters will do 5,000 parts per million or 0.5% of volume. Um, and you also want to look for the reactor. So what reactor does is it's a uh, blend of uh, metal halides and activated carbon which actually captures uh, radioactive iodine and methyl iodide. Now, uh, radioactive iodine and methyl iodide get released during nuclear disasters, um, IND ex uh, explosions, dirty bombs. So it's very important that your CBRN filter uh, is built specifically for this application. Uh, this here is a pocket-sized Geiger counter. Uh, so this counter, you can fit it in your duty belt, fit it in your pocket, and the best Geiger counter is the one you have with you at all times. So this is very compact, very easy to carry. And one, one of the biggest things is you, know, you need information. If something happens where you hear an explosion go off, you're going to want to know right away, is this threat nuclear or is it not nuclear? Is, there, you know, is this a dirty bomb or not? And this will tell you right away before the feds come in, start scanning the place down, and then have to tell the people who are exposed to it that they've been exposed to something potentially deadly. This gives you information right at your fingertips, and it retails for $150. Uh, but just during SHOT Show, we do have a special going on, 20% off on all products uh, using coupon code SHOT20 on our website, mirrorsafety.com.
Uh, the filters range everywhere from uh, $20 filters all the way up to $90 for the filter uh, for the specialized products. Uh, so then we have the mass here. This is our CM6M, our biggest seller. Uh, the CM6M has a speech amplifier in it, a speech diaphragm, so uh, when there's an emergency happening, you can communicate effectively with your team, which is very important. You can apply the filter on the left or right side. It has two filter ports for left or right-handed shooters, depending on um, you know how you shoot. Uh, it does also. Uh, uh, it is compatible with a spectacle kit. Uh, this kit right here is a 3M spectacle kit, which is compatible with. So, you know, if you've ever been exposed to tear gas, you know that you shouldn't have contacts in your eyes if you get exposed to tear gas. And uh, this spectacle kit will allow you to not wear contacts with the mask, and will protect your retinas in case you get exposed. Uh, all of these, both masks are compatible with Camelback hydration systems. Uh, you know, if you're going to get thirsty, you're going to be exerting yourself, and you want to make sure uh, that you're able to connect and have uh, water all the time. This mask right here is a CM7M, so slightly different construction as you can see. And the CM7M is specifically designed for use with optics. Now this mask is actively being used by military in the Czech Republic, Latvia, and Lithuania. And as you can see, the recessed visor design allows you to get the optic closer to your eye. You're also going to get a cheek weld here uh, because it's designed in a way that you can get closer to the stop. Um, both masks do come with a uh, canteen as well. Um, so you can attach this to either mask if you don't want to connect to a camelback. Uh, this comes right out of the box. This right here is a uh, hazmat suit. Uh, this material is actively being used by the USDOD. And for the first time in history, we've actually made this uh, available uh, for children as well. So we have this size down to a uh, kids age three years old, all the way up to large guys, you know, six foot five plus 260 pounds. Uh, we've got the gloves, we've got the boots as well. And we also have a children's mask. Uh, now this works through positive pressure because for children it is harder to breathe through a gas mask uh, because there is a breathing resistance involved in it. So uh, with a mask like this, it's constantly blowing air through positive pressure into the mask, making it much easier to wear over longer periods of time. Uh, so that's pretty much a breakdown of all of our products. Uh, once again, you can check us out at www.mirasafety.com. Make sure you use coupon code SHOT20. Uh, this ends right after SHOT Show. Uh, it's going to be the biggest sale of the year, 20% off on all products on our website.